everyone. Welcome to another Learn English with Football show. Welcome, 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 whether you're watching live or later on, wherever you're watching for whatever time of the day uh, it is. We are glad to have you here. Obviously, this is a live show about football, specifically the Premier League, and it features football fans. We've got three fantastic guests. The regulars, actually, from last season, the, the fantastic trio, uh, Nrup Leontes and Paul. And what we're going to do here today is we're going to discuss highlights of the latest Premier League game week. Namely, it's game week 10. And uh, I just want to I just want to mention at this point that later this week, um, this show will be followed by another show, it's a, a shorter one, which is called The Language Corner. And in that one, I'm going to explain uh, selected language. Usually it's some vocabulary, some words, expressions, phrases and stuff um, in a short video. So you can look forward to that as well. But without further ado, let's introduce our guests today. So uh, let's start with Leontes, a Dutchman supporting yes. Manchester United. Good yes. to have you back. Thank you. Good to be back again. I had I had a very busy weeks, um, previous weeks. So um, I'm glad that I'm able to be back for um, for this week's show. Yeah, Manchester United fan. Been so for um, quite some time. We've had some <clears throat> tumultuous seasons and a tumultuous okay. start as well. Yeah, but I have to say credit to you for actually being top, top of the table right now yeah. and like, doing pretty well. All things considered, not I think it, it's not the worst. It's not the worst. No, it is. It is the worst though for another guest here. Uh, two back-to-back -back appearances for none other than Paul. Hi, Paul. Hi, Zedek. Manchester United are not top of the table. They are fifth, I think. But that's and top, right? Liverpool are tenth. Oh, so sorry, are... sorry. What I meant was top half yes. of the table. The, the top half. They're challenging for Europe. Top half of the table. Yeah, they are. Are they in the sixth or something? Sixth or seventh or something like that. Sorry, that's I mean top fifth. half of the table, not top of the table. But yes, they are challenging for Champions League. Liverpool are. Yeah, it's not looking good even for Champions League positions now for Liverpool. And kudos to you and respect for making it today despite having to face Nrup, who is <laughs> who is an Arsenal fan. And obviously, uh, Nrup, I have to say, he was originally benched for this one. He was. He was originally <laughs> ah, benched. I'll, I'll be honest with you, yeah? I'll just, <laughs> I'll just admit it. But someone got injured in the warm-up, so he's on now. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm back, finally. Thank you, thank you, Zenek, to give me the opportunity. Oh, Obviously, you always have my uh, trust, and um, I decided to bench you because I thought, I thought I would be putting a, a cat amongst the pigeons, inviting you. You know that there would be. I'm an Arsenal fan myself. You know, Paul is here. This is a good week for Narup to be on. I think it's a, it's a good victory <laughs> for Arsenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, to be honest, to be honest, I I wasn't. Re I'm of course not an Arsenal fan, but. You know, since last season, um, I've been kind of rooting for Arsenal. So I'm happy for both of you, uh, Zenek and Rup, that Arsenal's playing so well. And I definitely hope they beat Manchester City because that's the worst thing in, in the world, I think. Thanks. Well, yeah. we also hope that uh, Liverpool beat Manchester Liverpool, City. Liverpool, exactly. <laughs> that, that's a big next week. Anyway, I, my I, idea was not to invite Nrup originally because I thought I didn't want to gang up on Paul here, yeah, because uh, especially after what happened. So, yeah. <laughs> so don't worry, <laughs> it's fine. We uh, can lose to Arsenal at the at the Emirates. <laughs> it's like it's perfectly fine. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't the thrashing. It, yeah, it wasn't six three or anything no, like no, that. It wasn't. It wasn't. And here is obviously <laughs> Nrup's Instagram account in case. Anyone is interested in hiring a, a club doctor, a club doctor, for example, a team, a Premier League team who desperately needs a doctor, you will have to wait a few years because yeah. Nrup is still a student at university. But one day, I don't think you can get a better doctor because not only not only will he be a great doctor, but he is he's gonna be a, a, a or he is already um, a football fan, and you really want. You really want that because you he will understand 
Because they have enough people flying and falling yeah. to the ground. Yeah, thanks a lot, Zenia, for the letter of recommendation. I, I'll I'll reach out. Thank you. Uh, Someone might watch this in in six years time. When, Definitely. After you've done all your you know internship and all that, so you never know. You never know. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, I'll pretend I didn't understand that comment from Paul there. <laughs> <as well. laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess I guess we do have a few players who do that. Yes, Paul. But like, tell me who doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Oh, they all do. Yes. Yeah. A lot of lot of lot of teams have players like that. Now even like West Ham, where they have been known for for really like this is not the club culture right, at West Ham. They don't want that. But even there, you, I have seen recently some di diving. Players do it. Yeah. It's yeah. it's not the players' fault for doing it. I think it's, it's the uh, rules and the referees. Yeah. 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 It's part and parcel of football, and mm -hmm. for now we'll have to unfortunately uh, uh, come to terms with it. Yeah. All right, guys, uh, it's time to start with the first segment, which is the, the simplest one. We're just going to tell everyone what were the matches that we saw. Who would like to start? Well, I've only seen Man United um, versus Everton. I did see some highlights from other games uh, during the break. But um, which one? Yeah, only Man United. Tell us about the the games that you saw the highlights of, if you want. Uh, I think I saw. What did I see? Um, I saw something from Leeds. Um, I saw something from. What else did I see? Let me see. Oh, I saw Leeds, Tottenham. Yeah, Leeds I saw lost, some highlights yeah. from Tottenham. Yeah, Leeds yeah. Lost, lost at Crystal Palace. Yeah, Crystal Palace two one. Tottenham. Tottenham uh, beat uh, Brighton. Brighton, yeah. 1-0. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I watched yeah. that match. And I think it's I've good. also seen the highlights for West Ham Fulham. Yeah. Nice. Okay, Paul? I watched Spurs Brighton. I watched uh, Liverpool Arsenal. And then Everton Man uh, Arsenal Liverpool, Everton Manchester United. And yeah. I've seen the highlights of Newcastle Brentford. Ah, interesting. I think Newcastle... Uh, Thrashed Brentford yeah. five one or something. Yeah, they look really strong this season. They don't do. They? Yeah, yeah, they're playing well. I think there's this feel good factor with the new owners and like everyone knows that mm -hmm. they, they are in for some really good times, you know. And the, when the fans fans are on your side, yeah, I think yeah. like since yeah. Eddie Howe, since the turn of the year, they are like Champions League mm -hmm. uh, form. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I agree. I agree. All okay. right. Okay, and Rup, how about you? I watched the game versus uh, Liverpool, Arsenal versus Liverpool, and I did watch the highlights of uh, Newcastle versus uh, Brentford after I looked at the score. Yeah, it was quite okay. impressive. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I've um, also seen the goals for Arsenal, by the way. Arsenal, Liverpool, I've seen the goals. Only the Arsenal goals, not the Liverpool goals. No, also the Liverpool goals. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Myself, I watched the Manchester City Southampton. I don't know what it is, but it's just it's just just cool some, sometimes to just watch watch Haaland score score all those hat tricks. So in that in that sense, I was disappointed that he only got one goal this time. I'm Unbelievable! Happy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So the fancy football. Yeah, ah, you don't have Haaland. Don't have in, in your... yeah. well, we're gonna talk about that at the end of the show. Obviously, fantasy oh, football. Sorry. Okay. No, no, that's okay. Uh, feel free to mention. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's okay. So uh, myself, I saw that game, uh, Manchester United Southampton, and then I watched the Brighton Tottenham game. But I don't think I saw the whole game; just bits and pieces. Then on Sunday, uh, West Ham, Fulham, Arsenal, Liverpool, and also I did see a few few bits from the Everton Manchester United game, which I thought I wouldn't be able to, but in the end, I did see uh, some bits from that. Right. Yeah. So that's that. And now let's talk about game week highlights. And before we do, I would like to in, uh, invite, not invite, I would like to remind everyone watching this live that you guys can get involved in the comments. This is actually something we would appreciate uh, to make this show a little bit more interactive. If there is a nice comment, <laughs> 
Um, we may even put it on screen if it's a question for one of our guests. If it's if it's some kind of comment you want to make, uh, responding to something we have said, feel free to do that as long as obviously you are respectful. Thank you very much for doing that, by the way, because it does help the channel and the show. So where do we start? Um, as always, I think we should first cover the, 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 the games of the teams that we support. So let's talk about, I guess we, we're going to have to start with, um, I say we're going to have to, as if I'm not happy to. I am really happy to start with the Arsenal-Liverpool game. So um, before this game, Paul, um, what were your expectations going into this game? With the lineup, we played the same starting eleven as we did against Rangers with um, like four two four more or less. Really, uh, it's quite an attacking lineup. Uh, it can be a four four two, but most, they're they're four attacking players. So I was a little bit excited to be honest because I think it worked well versus Rangers. I thought we pressed higher. We had a bit more of a threat up front, and. But the more I thought about it, I was thinking, ah, but, ah, it's a new system for Liverpool and they haven't played this system so much. Arsenal seems settled in their system. They know where all the players are going to be on the pitch. So, yeah, I was excited. I expected Liverpool to win, to be honest. I did. I was, I was excited because Arsenal haven't scored against us. Yeah. Never mind. Like They've played well, but they haven't Yeah. Liverpool have beaten Arsenal. I've had Arsenal's number for the last seven matches, I think. Arsenal haven't scored against Liverpool. So, I I know Arsenal are playing well, but I was quietly confident. Yeah. yeah. Also, you might have thought that it could have been in Arsenal players' heads. You know, sometimes it is. Like, if you... What yeah. do you call it? A boogie team, right? If you have a boogie, boogie. team... Boogie. Bo boogie team. If you have a bogey team, a team that you always lose against... Yeah. Even if even if uh, that team is not playing well, uh, sometimes you just you just can't perform against them because it's in, all in your head, right? And I think it was a little bit for Arsenal. They scored early, but then for the rest of the half, they sat back. I thought they like they yeah. they sat back and that allowed Liverpool to dominate possession yeah. and get the equaliser. And that second goal, that was the killer, really. That second goal was terrible so it was in injury time in the first mm. half liverpool get a free kick and i'm looking at the clock thinking there's time for a counter attack here there's time for a counter attack yeah. and it was wasn't a good free kick and then there's a counter attack and trent didn't do so well with that no, he didn't cover himself in great glory no. and it was a real sucker punch Exactly, Wasn't it that's group? a good word. Yeah, it, it was, was a suck. Well, it's not only that; it's also a pun because it was Saka who scored. The goal. <laughs> hey, yeah, good one. You should write I, the headlines. I, no, I, <laughs> hang on, I'll hold, hold my hands up. I, I've heard it on a podcast, so uh, I can't claim the ownership of this okay. one. But I thought it was so that's good. It has that's to good. be. It has to be repeated here. So, oh, completely. It was because I thought Liverpool played well, but they went in at half time, two one down. And it was like, oh, we've just played well. Yeah. And how are we getting beat? 2 1. And then Arsenal went in on a high, but knowing that they could play better because yeah. they never played that well, really. So they went in on a high and played much better in the second half. Arsenal deserved to win it after that second half performance, I think. Mm -hmm. Liverpool didn't do much at all, but I think it was because of that second goal. It deflated Liverpool. They played well. And then they were getting beat two one. Luis Diaz going off didn't help. Yeah, Trent going off. I don't know if that helped or not. Uh, but um, probably yeah. yeah. Yeah, Arsenal deserved it in the second half. Okay. What is going on with Liverpool? What is your? I missed, of course, a few weeks. What is your opinion on the Liverpool situation? Ten points only. Yeah. Yeah, we've drawn a lot of games. We've lost two games now. I think I think it's men mentally, really. Okay, we've, Sadio Mane is gone and we haven't replaced his goals and his aggression and his strength up front, really. Luis, Di Luis Diaz is brilliant. He's doing really well. I just think mentally, it's like to go so close at the end of last season, losing only three games to go so close and it was every match 
throughout the season. And then this year, we start the season against Fulham. And teams are energetic. They're up for it. They want to beat Liverpool. It's a big match. And Liverpool are there. If they're close matches, Manchester United, we didn't play well. But first 10, 15 minutes, Manchester United, were they needed to win. The crowd is right behind them. And then Arsenal is the same. And Liverpool are there. Like, it's toe for toe. But we're just not mentally... I think we're a bit tired. A bit like, ah, oh, can't be bothered. Can't be bothered with these teams. Yeah. Like energetically running, like and just yeah. really wanting to win. And then last season we could match them, and maybe we had that desire this season. I think it, mentally, it's we've just dropped off a little bit. I agree, and I think it it was possibly inevitable, especially after that. You remember last season we were talking about the possibility of quadruple here, it, and yeah. like this this must be quite sort of demanding in terms of like nerves you know like you have to really mm -hmm. you hear it everywhere left right and center mm -hmm. and then there's new season and you have to like again prove yourself it can't be that easy so i i'm, I'm not I, I can't say i'm surprised that mm -hmm. liverpool faded away a bit but at the same time i have to say it's still just nine games now is it 10 games 10 games liverpool in liverpool have played eight games liverpool, liverpool, have, played liverpool eight have one games. game in hand right it's yeah. it's game week 10 but there have been nine games but liverpool has only mm -hmm. have only there played eight one yeah. week was exactly. off because of the queen yeah but let, let, let's get nrup involved so nrup eight wins out of nine games wow can you imagine yeah. that at the start of the season what for the, us? What was the what was the game that you guys didn't I, win again? I was gonna mention it. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, okay. The only, the only points we lost was at uh, Old Trafford. Yes. Yeah, so. At Old Trafford. And uh, yeah, I mean, I can't believe this. Uh, I think Arteta has, uh, I think the the expectation that I've had, he has he has surpassed those expectations long time ago. And yeah, I think I think everyone has to realize now. What Arteta has done for the club, and uh, yeah, I think twenty-five percent of the season is done, and we are on the top of the table. Lost just one game. Uh, I think that's a big feat, and yeah, that too we won against Liverpool, and that was the moment that we always needed because last season we had our moments where we could have gone into top three, top four, and we had those games, and we 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 could never get those games right. And this season we had the moment, and yes, we got it. And I'm really proud of the team. Uh, yeah, Liverpool, they, I think they, they lost their confidence and they have lost their balance this season. Uh, because if you look at it, the Liverpool, in any team in general, they are they are like an organism. And when you lose an important uh, organ or some part of body, they, you'll always have some sort of leak. And I think yeah. that's what happened with Mane. When, when it came to Arsenal, when we lost Aubameyang, when we lost Sanchez, I think that's what happened with us as well. And yeah, I think Liverpool they just need more time, they need more patience. But then yeah. since they are since they are a top team for the past four or five seasons, uh there's lots of impatience. People need uh quick results, and yeah, that's the pressure. It's the external pressure. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about the internal pressure. I think Liverpool will definitely fight back. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. Hope well they it's, will, yeah. it's a battle for top four, I think now. Yeah, but yeah, there's still plenty of games to be played, yeah. right? It's hmm. it's not it's not over. Like it's you're not you're not in the strongest position now, but like honestly, have you seen the table? Like okay, apart from Arsenal, City, possibly even Tottenham, surprisingly, like there's still plenty, plenty, you know. Yeah, it's inter Arsenal. Good luck challenging City. <laughs> nah, well, done it a few no, years. I mean. I don't but think like, you can give us such responsibilities. Let's be realistic like, there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, like and I read a quote today and I liked it. It was um it was saying that City are the problem, they're not the benchmark, they are the problem. And <laughs> well, it said Lance Armstrong, you know, the, the drug uh, Tour de France rider, he was not the benchmark, he was the problem. <laughs> and I thought it's a great quote because they're so far ahead and everyone's trying to reach him, but like they are the problem. And Haaland is the yeah. problem. He scored 20 goals in 13 matches. And wow. there's now a petition calling for him to be banned from football. And it has been signed for um, it has been signed by almost two million people now. 
It's a real thing. I'm not making this people. up, Leontes. Two million people. Why? Why? <laughs> you can't get involved. Why anyone start that petition? So you, 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 wouldn't, you wouldn't sign it yourself? No, of course not. You? He's just, I mean, unless he's, he's doing anything illegal, he's just very good. I mean, why would you, anyone ban someone for being good? That's, that's like the yeah. worst thing in life. I think it's, it's a joke. I, I don't yeah. know. I think it's a there joke. There was a tweet. There was a, yeah. tweet it's a joke made by two million people, you know, because it just ruins the reputation of English football of not being a farmers league I run don't... by one club. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. yeah. I think. Do you, a... do you remember that there was this talk when Solskjaer was still manager of United that he actually wanted to get Haaland? Imagine yeah. what it would have been. But then I was thinking about this, and maybe Haaland wouldn't have been as good as he's now, if he would have been at United, because we have these underlying issues that need solving. Mm -hmm. So, well, I also he, heard that I also he did. Heard that he made criteria, didn't he? Supposedly, and United yeah. didn't meet his criteria. <laughs> I saw a tweet that Haaland, because he's not in the World Cup, each national team should be allowed to thirty yeah. minutes of Haaland. <laughs> <laughs> any match they should call upon call him if they need him yeah that, that would be fun yeah okay so going back to that arsenal game so there are a few few things we could we could discuss so obviously saka you know hasn't been scoring any goals lately last last season he was the the best he was the top scorer this season he has kind of been overshadowed by uh, gabriel jesus and martina when i say overshadowed He's still playing. He has been still playing well, but I think some other players have been playing even better. So it was nice to see Saka get a brace, wasn't it? It was, and uh, when it comes when it comes to overshadowing, I think it's a good sign considering there's a competition in the team. It's not a 19 year old kid carrying the club, and also you have to look from this aspect that Saka has always been a big a big game player. Whenever it came to uh, to matches, uh, considering top six teams, he has always performed well, and he has always been the been the threat. And as you look at the first goal that we had, uh, I think you can see how Saka performed. He passed that goal. He passed the ball to Odegaard, and then Odegaard had to flick the ball to Martinelli. And I think that was all because of Saka. So I'm glad. I'm glad Saka had his moment. The only the only missing element was uh, a number on the scoreboard. And yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad he is back. Exactly. Especially after what he had to go through after missing that crucial penalty in the yes. uh, penalty shootout in the Euros final against Italy, which cost England the the title actually. So and and then he got a lot of racial abuse and he had to go through a lot. And actually, you might you might have thought, well, Saka wanting to take more penalties. You are a sucker for punishment. Sucker for punishment. <clears throat> Anyway, um, but he did, he did. And I think he showed leadership qualities. The fact he was not afraid to do it, he stepped up. Did you guys know that since that, uh, since that miss in the Euros, he scored, against, he scored a penalty against Chelsea, Manchester United, and now Liverpool? And that and, too, uh, against yeah. the top goalkeepers, when you think yeah. of it. And, and this is, did, this... did Jesus win the, all of those penalties? Do you know? I can't remember, but yeah, yeah he did. Oh really? He's good. He's very good at winning penalties, isn't he? He's a, he's amazing at the in the box. Yeah. He knows what to do, yeah. Yeah. It was a soft penalty, but I understand why it's It good. was a soft penalty. Yeah, I'll give you that. He was he was yeah. like he barely kicked kicked him, but Yeah. He, I don't think he he went to the ground for no reason like he he must have yeah, been there was contact and yeah. I think VAR it was supposedly brought in to avoid Deci uh, making mistakes from referee referees and help the referees, but it's also made it that any contact becomes a penalty. Now, just because there's contact, players oh. know it will be checked. Oh, he touched me, he yeah. touched me. And they know it will be checked. So yeah, that's, but Klopp, Klopp I, wasn't very happy at the at the at the press conference. He he did say it was a soft penalty. And yes, yeah, but like we yeah, it the they happen. It like it does happen all over the world. These penalties because of VAR. I think if, if there's contact, players fall to the ground and they ask for it to be reviewed. If it's not given, and it's usually a penalty. 
It was a penalty in the first half as well. I think Liverpool should have had a penalty. What do you I, think? I, I still think it's not only about the contact. I think it should be about the level of intensity. It should well, it should be like yeah. where does the contact happen? If you like hold someone for like a split second, yeah, maybe it's not a penalty, you know. But if you yeah. kick someone, he was trying to get to the ball, right? So he had his body in front of that player, whoever kicked him. So for me, that's he was lunging as well. Like they both were lunging for the ball. It wasn't like he had the ball. He, they both lunged for the True. ball. True, yeah. but like for me, that's yeah. that's a more penalty than if somebody like, you know, like what happened. There was a funny penalty in the West Ham game. Uh, I don't know if you will have time to get to that, but um, that was that was an incredible penalty. Craig, Craig Dawson, <laughs> yeah. Craig Dawson was obstructed by um, um, Leandro Mar No, not Leandro Martinez. What's his name? You know, there's a Fulham. Is he Brazilian? Playing for Fulham, Paulinho, Mar um, Andreas, Andreas, or something. Oh, like Andreas Pereira. Pereira. Andreas yeah. Pereira. Is he, Bra Pereira. Is he Brazilian? Is he Brazilian? Yes. Ex United yeah. player. So he yeah. he was he was kind of obstructing, or sort of like trying to hold um, Greg Dawson before the cor corner kick was even taken, and the referee told him off for that twice. He said, "Don't do that. Don't do that." He stopped the like um, sort of delayed the taking the free kick and said don't do that yeah and then he did it again and he again blew his whistle and said don't do that and then the, the west ham player took the free kick and half a second later <laughs> dawson gets past andreas again and um it's a foul penalty <laughs> it was such a bizarre such a bizarre penalty wow <laughs> it was barely a penalty but it do was you given. think liverpool should have had a penalty in the first half I wanted to talk about that as well. Did you see that, Leontes? No, no. There was a penalty shout from Liverpool as well. Let's ask Noob here. Let's ask Noob who saw that. I saw that. Uh, and I think uh, if you look at the action, I don't think it was a penalty because the intention wasn't uh, towards the hand. He wasn't trying to save the ball. But then, of course, it touched the hand. And when you look at it, the referees, they had enough time to have a look at the VAR, considering it's Arsenal. And they did not. I don't know why, but yeah, seems yeah, like it was it a wasn't surprise. A it was a surprise. It was. It was a close call, but yeah, yeah I'm because... more surprised that it. I'm more, I'm more surprised that it wasn't a penalty because it's Arsenal. But yeah, <laughs> no, because they are they are usually given. That's why the commentators were like, "Oh, that's a penalty. That's a penalty." But and even in the Newcastle Brentford match, there was pretty much a very similar. Uh, thing happened, somebody headed the ball and it hit his hand from a close distance it was given as a penalty but I don't agree with these penalties to be honest like it's not like the offence that doesn't warrant the, the a penalty really, like just a ball hitting a hand, it wasn't intentional yeah. I, I agree with that but in the rules they are given every week, and they, are, they have like, changed. Every, they have changed the rules practice. as well. Like it, it, it used to be different. Now, now it should be like almost every single touch. Yeah. So it was surprising. Button. It wasn't given. And true. So, true. Also, also, the, there are several like, like aspects they have to consider. Like, is the hand in the natural position, whatever that means? No. <laughs> then yeah. another one is the proximity. So apparently, in this case. It could be justified as not no yeah. penalty because he was too close. It was like so close to to the like you know to that player. His hand was in you like because like it's strange because this is yeah. not a natural position <laughs> to be honest. And I've seen players actually just keeping their hands by their sides and using their hand, and they get away with it because yeah. it, they say it's in a natural position. But if you like, if your hands here, it's usually a penalty. What is the natural position anyway, Leontes? How what's it? Yeah. What's in your opinion a natural position of of a, of a player to have have a hand in? I think hand. Um, it depends on on the dynamic of the moment. I think that's very important. If you have your hands in a natural position alongside your body and it comes against your hand, I mean, is that really a penalty? Um, the same the same with the I'm going to skip ahead. I think with the Rashford hand issue with his goal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Nowhere in his right mind did he purposefully use his hands 
or something. Mm -hmm. So I think that's part of that should be part of the equation as well. Is it a natural dynamic moment? Yeah. And that was a disallowed goal, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then and then there was a very very similar incident at the London Stadium, West Ham against Fulham. Yeah, why and was that, was Kamaka, that was Kamaka scoring a world class goal, but he didn't even celebrate it. At first, he thought he was offside, but possibly he might have thought he had touched. He, he, mm -hmm. all kind it, of it touched, touched his, his hand and they very was, slightly. Yeah, but, and that was yeah. given. So again, mm -hmm. we it comes down to consistency. Like, why, yeah. why is it so hard to be consistent? You know, their excuse was that they didn't have conclusive. Video footage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I get it. Like hand. I, but, I, but then that that makes sense. I think that makes sense. Yeah. If you can't prove it using VAR, then mm -hmm. you should say, okay, it's it's you know we can't do anything about it. That but it sense. still didn't prevent the Fulham manager going absolutely mental <laughs> during that match. I can't. I don't understand how how he wasn't sent off honestly <laughs> because he was going nuts. We miss Jose Mourinho. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay, so um, I'm going to ask Nrup about the Mohamed Salah, arguably the best player of the Premier League in the last few seasons. Okay. Um, doesn't seem to be in a good form. Um, he was subbed off in the 69th minute. Good decision, in your opinion, to sub him off? Uh, yes, I think so, considering the way he was playing. Uh, but I think it's more of a tactical thing uh, from Klopp because ever since uh, there has been influx of players like Luis Diaz and Darwin Nunes and also uh, uh, Diego Jota, I think uh, Salah hasn't been playing that much in the in, into the D line into the box. He has just been more of a carrier, ball ball carrier, creating those goal goal chances. And uh, yeah, when when I saw his game, he was being pocketed in a way by Tomiyasu, which was really sad to see such player. I mean, I really admire him. I yeah, considering that, I think it was a good decision. Was it sad to see Nuru? Yeah, it was. I I mean, you know, for me, like if you look at it from a Premier League perspective, yeah, he's a Premier League icon. He's a great player, and considering he's coming from a third world country like Egypt. I think it's a big thing what he has done to the world yeah. of football. No, totally. Like, big respect for him. And he's big a respect. great person as well. He's a, he, he I, know is, he gets, he is. I know people think he dives, but he hasn't dived in about four years. I don't think. He, he, he doesn't he, even have diving equipment, guys. Come on. like <laughs> he, he, he doesn't dive. He, like, he needs to be assaulted before he gets a free kick. But, um, yeah, he's playing wide, as Narup said. He's playing wider. And... Um, he signed a new contract, didn't he? So it's he's getting paid. Yeah, but I think it's, anyway. it's not just like it's not just him. You see that, that like the whole team is not functioning really well right now. So, like it's sometimes it's difficult for that one star like to shine. And let's be honest, a lot of things went against him. Like that game that you won against Bournemouth, nine nine nil, the record win. That mm -hmm. game he didn't get an assist and a goal, and he had like xG of like. I don't know, two or three. Yeah. And then nobody understood how he could have like missed those, those sitters he had. So sometimes like a few things go against you and maybe then it's in your head because you are a player. You are a player that is used to scoring a lot of goals. And then if, you, if it's not happening for you next time, you have a chance. Maybe it's in your head, you know. Going back to that, to that um, win over Bournemouth, do you know, Paul... I'm sorry for, for saying this, but do you know that Bournemouth are above you now in the league? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of teams are above us. Uh, yeah, it's still early days. Hopefully we'll be okay. Yeah. But the games come thick and fast. I, as I've said to you, we've had a tough start. I, I know it. we've played Everton away, Manchester United away, Arsenal away. These are tough matches for Liverpool. And we've only played, what, eight games. We've won the two games at home. We're still unbeaten at home. We've lost two games away and drawn. But like the two games we've drawn against Brighton and Crystal Palace at home. Mm. We should have won, really. We should have won. But um Yeah. yeah well, Chris, uh, Crystal uh, Palace so beat, beat, beat the city last season, you know. So they are no mugs. They are capable of uh, anything. Yeah, we were down to ten men in the first half as well. So yeah. yeah. Um 
Yeah. All right. Things, well, have, things have just gone against us a little bit. Yeah. Like I said, like, I, I hope uh, you guys uh, bounce back now. Even Arteta said at the press conference he wanted to sort of like give you encouragement because I think he, he realized that <laughs> we now need yeah. you. We need yeah. you to stop yeah. City. There's not many teams that can beat City. Liverpool have beat City in the That's champion, right. in the, That's what's right. it called? It's the community shield at the yeah. start of the season, quite comfortably. Well, not comfortably, but they were clear winners. And yeah, at Anfield, it could be, yeah, it could be. A chance to kickstart the season, maybe. You're still a team of that that produces heavy metal football. So if anyone can do it, it's you. Yeah, yeah. Well, now and I think City are heavy metal football. You think so? I think so. Yeah, uh, yeah. With Haaland, they're playing a lot more like Liverpool. I feel they don't have as much possession. They're more like explosive. Hmm. Yeah, I feel that uh, I'm enjoying City this season because we're not challenging them. And I just think yeah. their style of play is a bit more yeah. um, entertaining. Enjoyable. I have to say, yeah, I have to say the same thing. Because like last season, it was it was painful to watch those thrashings. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was quite possession-based. I don't know. But this season, I think it's the Holland. Holland is the factor for me. Like It's yeah, just definitely. fun watching him score. <laughs> <laughs> and run around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, barely touching the ball and then just... Being yeah. there in the right moment, at the right time, you know. <laughs> Somebody is asking, did Ronaldo play well? Sorry. I wanted. I. I. Sorry. I'm saving that comment for the for the, Sorry, for the Manchester man. yeah. for the Manchester game. Yeah, Mango, Mango. Thanks for your comment. Uh, so um, yeah, I just wanted to end this one by asking Leontes. Uh, so does this uh, does the Manchester United beating Arsenal moment uh, put puts does it put things into perspective now? That's a that's a really really good win, right, over Arsenal. Considering this is this is the only time they drop points. Yeah, I think so. But I think we had the same. Uh, I think two seasons ago, where Liverpool became champions, they won. The, I think that that season, and the only time they lost points was against United when they drew one one. I think one of Solskjaer's yeah. first games. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. I think we, we're just good at doing those things and that's it. Yeah. I think sometimes it's just like it's it's the occasion you're playing at Old Trafford, it's the team, the, the magnitude of the team you're playing, you know. Yeah. So these big teams, they have massive fan base. You you think about you look forward to that game if you are a player about to play mm -hmm. one of those teams, you look for you for look forward to that for several days. Your friends talk to you about it, your family members. Sometimes it can be a mental, mental thing, right? Yeah. So yeah. I suppose it's quite heartwarming or for a Manchester United fan, but worrying for me and other uh, teams. I don't think Manchester United are playing well. No, really. Every time I see them, like I'm not. There's moments where they play well, but, but I think don't... that's yeah. quite that's good because they're winning. Yeah, like, I... they're, won they're winning, and they're not playing well. For me, it's the I same think. with with Tottenham. I don't yeah. think Tottenham are playing well. I don't I like the way they play. It's boring yeah. to watch them. A yeah. little bit similar to United, but getting they are getting points. So yeah. you just sometimes have these spells, and, and if you mm. go, get through them, it, things could turn around, and they still have some fantastic players, yeah. both like, these yeah. teams. Yeah. Man so, United's victories, are, they're grinding out victories. Sorry, to, uh, I'm going on to the match yesterday, but they had, like, they put Varane on, McTominay on. It was, uh, like, backs to the wall uh, in at times near the end. We're, but yeah. they're winning by the odd goal. So when We're they do click, I think they will click. And, yeah, I think. Yeah, let's... let's exciting let's, let's, times for them. Let's talk about this game then. Um, so, nice transition, uh, Paul. So... Leontes, you are the Manchester United fan. Yeah, obviously, I assume you watched the game. So how yeah. how was it? How do you, how do you how, what do you make of it? Well, I think it was um, it was it was challenging to at the beginning of the game. I was like, hmm, what's going to happen? Uh, because we've had the Manchester City game, which was dreadful. But then again, I mean, it was it was dreadful, but then not really dreadful because I think. You know, you lose against Manchester City. I mean, it, it's obvious, right? It was obvious yeah. that we were going to lose. Um, mm -hmm. Even though Solskjaer won 
I think three out of four times. So, you really? know, yeah, 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 he did. Yeah, he had a good record. Yeah. So, you know, it, it could have been worse, right? We could have lost six to nil, right? That would have been terrible. We lost six to three. So, you know, it could have been three nil, fine. But then yeah. when I watched the Europa League game, that was dreadful. That was terrible. <laughs> that was, that was, that was <laughs> wow. <laughs> Three, two, wow. Yeah. I watched that. I watched that. Yeah. And and the thing is, I think Erik ten Hag is doing great things, or Erik ten Hag, how we would pronounce it. <laughs> um, and I think he's doing great things. I think he has a vision. I think he's making right choices. I think he's really building his team. Um but he just needs time. I think he definitely needs time. And I think he still has this Ronaldo thing. I've said it before. I like Ronaldo. I like the way he plays. But I just don't think he's he's a value to the team building spirits. Mm. I'm glad that Maguire is out. <laughs> I think that would have been worse against Man City. Uh, it would have been 15, 16 nil probably. Mm-hmm. Um, but even the Everton game, I think United... You know, they, they started off quite okay-ish, and then you had the goal, which was an excellent goal. It was, it, wow, it was a perfect goal. Um, so it was 1-0, and then they had to come up from, from that. I think they really got into the game in the second half. It was sad to see Martial go, because I like Martial as a player, even though he's not the best player. I think he, so he got he, he got just, some... just, just to in, explain, he got injured, he got and, he, injured. Was, and then yeah. he was replaced by Ronaldo. Yeah, what? and he was replaced by Ronaldo. Yeah. At what uh, minute did that happen? 20 something, 26 20 or so. Uh, oh, yeah. okay. 29th, 29th. Okay, quite early. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I mean, it's not, as you said, it's not Manchester City beautiful football. But I think I think Ten Hag has a, he has a vision. He, ha- he sees something. He's picking the same players again and again. Yeah. Um, he's working on a strategy. And I think we're going to see, I mean, at the second half of the season, it's going to be good, I think. I think you can say that it's decent. Yeah, I think the defenders are happy defending now. They're giving yeah. each other high fives when they block a shot or make a tackle. It's a real yeah. unit. And yeah. add Casemiro into that. You've got a team full of yeah. cheats, <laughs> full of <laughs> professional winners. No, I mean, like people who want to win at all costs. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I think the I think we can see and feel that the toxicity that Pogba brought is gone. Yeah. You can Just... definitely see that the the toxicity he, he used to bring, you know, the off off the pitch um gossip, the Pogba wants to leave, blah blah blah. Yeah, this was his body That's language gone. as well, his behavior. Yeah, his, I yeah. think, you know, I think you're right. I think you're right, and that's why that's why uh, Arteta is doing so well because he also got rid of yeah, characters, Aubameyang. yeah, as ill to some extent, you know. So, yeah, yeah. But so yeah, talking... the, yeah. I I think it's it's nice to have Ronaldo. I hope he scores a few extra points. I think I hope he has an extra hat trick or two. That's fine. Is he overrated? I don't know whether he's overrated. I think he's he's. He's at the end of his. Um, he's at the end of his his peak, I think. Yeah. Um, he's had his heyday during his Real Madrid period, but he's now just. I think Ten Hag is using him well as a substitute who can do nice things, but he's not building his team around Ronaldo. He's looking at Rashford again. He's looking at Martial again. He's looking at Sancho. Uh, Martinez yeah. is doing excellent stuff. Anthony is excellent. Yeah. Um, Casimiro is nice. Bruno Fernandez is even, you know, he's. I, th- I feel that we're going to get there when he says Bruno Fernandez is going to be our first captain. Mm. That day, I will celebrate with cake. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 yeah, Leon, do, you think, do you think? Do you think uh, Ten Hag is? <laughs> yes, is, excellent. Ten Hag. <laughs> do you think that Ten Hag is doing an excellent job? At United, not sure about whether it's excellent, but I think he's doing a very good job. The club is progressing in a good way. I agree with the statement where Ronaldo is being used like how he should be. I agree, and yeah. Of course, uh, he's not building the team around uh, an aged player, even though he's an icon. 
But yeah, I have a question for Leontes. Uh, what about Sancho? Uh, you have spent so much of money on him. And uh, he has helped United whenever they were in a problem under Solskjaer. But then you have to realize he's a young icon, ex-Man United uh, talent, who's back to the club. Mm-hmm. Where yeah, do you see I think him? It's, um, I think it depends, really. I think sometimes, I think he's he's trying it out. What am I going to do with Sancho? But I think he's not at the top of his list. I think he's going to pick uh, Rashford as his striker and build around Rashford, maybe Rashford Marshall. Um, and I think Sancho, I think if we have a Marshall situation in the front, um, Sancho can be at the at the left, you know, at the left striker. He's in the kind of in the middle-ish, in that five, two, three thing. Um, so I think it might be a, a, a Sancho Rashford switch that he's going to switch them around. Mm-hmm. If especially if Marshall is um, in the point of attack. Yeah, he's been choosing Rash- Rashford there, hasn't he? I agree yeah. with what you're saying about Ronaldo. It keeps Ronaldo hungry. I know Ronaldo o- always wants goals, but now when he comes on, he's desperate for a goal, isn't yeah. he? Wow, and... the thing during the Europa League match. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, he His tights were against him, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. That's question... always been underwhelming. I think Rashford, is, I, think, I think he's a good player, very dangerous. He's lightning quick, rapid. But to build, like to have him as a focal point in your team, I think like there's elements of his game where he's just not good enough, or like doesn't seem like he works hard enough. I think, and similar, maybe similar with Ra- Sancho. They're 22. I think yeah. they're both about 22, aren't they? They're young, 21, 22. So it's they're not they're they're not finished developing yet, and. I think in a couple of years, they will be, yeah, they may develop even more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a question here. I mean, someone says, love the stream. We always glad to hear that. If you guys like the stream, make sure you uh, click the thumbs up button, the like button, please. Um, Do you think that Ronaldo played well last match? We have to say this. He did score the winner. And yeah. that was a well-taken goal. And not only that, it's his 700th goal, right? So what a, what an occasion that was. 700, wow. <laughs> yeah. I think it's, is, is that in all competitions or something? Yeah, it is. I think so, yeah. Wow. So, like, do, do you think he played well, Leontes? In this yeah, match? I think I think he played better than he did against uh, the weird... Europa League game. I'm I'm not going to try to pronounce the name instead of, otherwise I might mispronounce it. So I'm not going to do that. Um, (laughs) But um, I think he played better than then, and um, they needed then. And I think um, I think he played well. It was okay. It was fine. I think he enjoyed that he had to come on that early. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. All right. As uh, make. Uh, also says that he think he thinks he should finish his career at Sporting. Um, yeah, I think a lot of Ronaldo fans are disappointed, aren't they? Because their icon, he is loved all around the world, yeah. an icon for millions, I, yeah, millions of people, and he's sitting on the bench. Yeah, every match, so people want him to leave and to be respected, and yeah. Like I think he could if he wants to leave, he could. I think he could have in the in the summer. He doesn't need the money. He could go wherever he wanted. I think he must have thought, okay, I'll give United another season, see how it goes. And yeah, but he I think the best thing for his to end his career would just to stay at United, play yeah. the role he's playing now, and then at some point say, right, um, you know, even after maybe if he stays for another season. You know, if they win something, um, Europa League, Champions League, maybe even the title at some point, that he then says, fine, this is my moment to stop and not go back to sporting. And then, you know, he would never, you know, he will never, he will never play in a team that's developing, right? Even if he would go to Manchester City, he would have played less than if he would have, uh, than, than in, he's doing now because they have Haaland, because they have 
other excellent players that are just better than he is at the at yeah. the moment. Yeah. Yeah, I well, I think Maker said he wanted to leave. I think he did want to leave, but no, like the thing is, like these are all rumors, aren't they? Like, yeah, my, my, I have a I have a Turkish student. I have a one to one student from Turkey, who told me during our last lesson that there, there was a rumor of him going to Galatasaray uh, or being linked. Well, that's the end of his career, right there. That's for sure. Linked, linked with Galatasaray. So, like, I don't know what's going to happen. Where yeah. would you see him, Rup? Where would you see Ronaldo? I just want him to not follow the cliche pattern where big players, they go back to their home clubs and retire. I think he's a star That's player. Cool. I think he's an icon. He should just retire whenever he feels like. I mean, of course, he shouldn't put the club under pressure. But yeah, when it's his time, he should just call it off. doesn't matter if the uh, club hasn't been successful for a long time. If you remember, even Messi, he retired for a, for a short time when Argentina lost two back-to-back -back finals. But then he still came back. So... Yeah. There's always a time for Ronaldo. I think he still have a few years in him, honestly. Like, if you look at someone like Ibrahimovic, I, think... I mean, and imagine like how good he can still be for Portugal, like for the national team. I think he can still be a superstar because he has that status and he has fantastic players around him. Fantastic players around him. Like, it, it, you know, if you have players like that and then you are a goal scorer of his magnitude, of Ronaldo's stature, you can still be a fantastic part of the team, you know. Yes. But the problem, the problem at United is that, that 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 the rest of the team haven't been playing really well as a cohesive unit. So they are rebuilding the team, right? So that's why, like, it's hard if it's if it's just be, like sort of if he's if he's in that position to, you know, that that's one superstar that should save the club. I don't think we can he can do that at this no. age anymore, no. you know. And I do think that if you if he were to stay. And if he then would go into a managerial role, at some point he could be the manager that brings United back to to excellent times. I definitely feel that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially if we if Ten Hag gets sacked and then we get Zidane finally, and then you know in that <laughs> <laughs> utopian situation. Uh, well, you never know. You never know. Um, Paul, yeah, uh, your cousin is an Everton fan. We have had him on this on this show before. How yeah. does he see? Um, how does he see Everton's current form? Have you talked to him lately? Uh, I, but briefly, um, I think I speak to Everton fans every day. <laughs> not not just him, and they they are they are happy with Frank Lampard. They are getting behind the team. I think that they've made some two good signings as centre backs. Cody and Tarkovsky have Premier League experience. They haven't been playing great, but they've been playing better, I think. And Onana in midfield is a really, yeah. really. No, talented he was good. Player. He was really good yeah. against United as well. I thought he was one of. He was the the most dangerous. I like player. that he yeah. the shoulder barge with Casemiro. Where Casemiro yeah, also, like, he, to the floor. He, he, he had a few few nice headers as well, and yeah, yeah. he's a dangerous. He's really tall. He, he co covers the ground. He's a good player. I think they're happy with Frank Lampard. They had. Mm -hmm. They're still buzzing from the from staying up last season. <laughs> I think and having yeah, they won good. the pitch invasion of the year. Yeah, I that. remember that. We talked about that. I mean, <laughs> let's let's hope they 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 don't go down. Uh, but it's. I think it's early days. Honestly, like anything. Could I happen. think they'll be okay. Yeah, I think they're, they're looking. So. I think with those two centre backs, if if they keep them fit, I think mm -hmm. it'll be enough to stay in the league. Definitely. Very good. And it's time for our Heroes of the Week now. Okay, so Nrup, who is your Hero of the Week? It has to be Mikel Arteta. The way he has taken our team to such levels. Yeah, he's my hero for sure. Okay, fantastic. Leontes? I agree. I uh, was planning on saying Michael Arteta as well, but yes, Michael Arteta. I think he's doing an excellent job with Arsenal and winning from and beating Liverpool is always a good thing. So he's my hero of the week as well. Okay, I assume Paul's hero of the week is going to be Mikel Arteta. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> I thought he would get a hat trick, but no. <laughs> Did Klopp say he was so handsome or something? Did, I read something today. No. Yeah, he has had that reputation for a while, even as a player, yeah. like, honestly. Yeah. 
And my hero is going to be, I can't be an Arsenal player, can it? Um, it'll can. be Bruno Guimaraes for Newcastle. For Newcastle. <laughs> I, yeah, he's he's scored two. He, he's been the catalyst since he arrived at the club. He's been the catalyst for the upturn and fortunes for Newcastle. They look strong. He's a hero to the fans there. And he's pushing for a Brazilian place. And I think all the Brazilian players are pushing for a place on the squad. Yeah. It's so important for them. I think Coutinho yeah. tonight will score for yeah. Aston Villa versus Forest. Yeah, and Bruno Guimaraes, Paqueta for West Ham. They're all trying to get in the squad. And I can see that, yeah. He, yeah, so yeah, and he is my hero. And I have to mention Gabriel Martin, Martinelli myself because I thought he was immense yeah, on the day. He was out of this world. What yeah. a performance. And this is, this is consistently. He's performing like this consistently. Yeah. Not just that match. He is just the, the goal he scored, well taken. He was giving such such a hard time to, to Trent, honestly. The race with Luis Diaz for the ball in the first half, he he, he left him for dust, I thought. He, <laughs> he, he, he was getting away from Luis Diaz running for the ball. Mm. It was a, Yeah, he's lightning quick. He should be in the squad, but he's not. And the guy has asked about Anthony. Anthony yep. is in the Brazilian squad. He's a such a skillful player. He plays like a futsal player. Always taking little touches. I think he's yeah going to be a good asset for Manchester United. Definitely. Well, we have to mention that he scored three goals in his in his first three yeah. Premier League matches for United. Yeah. So he scored in every single Premier League match yeah. that he featured. So that's that's no mean feat. No. Yeah, he's a good player. Yeah. But for me, my hero of the week. Gabriel Martinelli, for sure. And now it's time for our Villains of the Week. Well, who, would, who would like to go first? I think the VA, I'm going to put the VAR. <laughs> Every single week. <laughs> yeah, I think no, but I think the Rashford thing wasn't, a, that wasn't a handball. No, that wasn't a handball. You think it was a rash decision from the <laughs> yeah, yeah, <it> a... <laughs> yes, it was a rash decision. Yeah, I don't know. I that rule was it's changed, it's been tweaked slightly, isn't it? And if if Rashford had passed to somebody when he went, did he go round the keeper? He went round the keeper, didn't he? No, he jumped over it, he jumped over the keeper. Oh, yeah, oh, that's what happened. But if he had then passed to somebody and they scored, it would have been allowed. Yeah. But because it was the player who scored, who is hand to hit, it's disallowed. And I'm not sure. I think that may be a good rule. It's black and white. But then again, if he would have gone down, uh, because one of the other players tackled him, and if he would have gone down, it would have been a red card. Possibly, yeah. Yeah. So that's why players dive now, isn't it? Well, yeah. fall to the ground. Okay, um, Luke, what about you? I have, I have a weird take. It's going to be the club Nottingham Forest. <laughs> and Trump. it's because... it's. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. You have to look at the form. They haven't won, I don't know, one game in the past six games. I think they just won one game, drew one. And... Uh, yeah, the, the, the manager has been weird. They have made so many signings, yet no results. They have made top signings. And on top of that, even after such results, the, the managers just had a contract uh, extension three days ago until 2025. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on. It's just it's shady to me. They seem like a bit of fraud. But then, I, I don't know. It's like uh, spending more money doesn't make you safe in the league, you know. So the way they are, the way they are playing football, or showing their spirit, I don't think it's good. Lingard on the bench. They have just started their match. Really? Yeah, yeah. against okay. Aston Villa. Lingard on bench. Yeah. So yeah, it's just. I don't weird. think it's a good thing for Dean Henderson that they're playing so poorly. No, he's getting lots of action. Yeah, it's true. Um, I have him as my goalie for fancy football. My villain of the week. <laughs> so, 
is Gabriel Jesus. Jesus. Wow. Come on. Come on. I know he's your hero. But Jesus Christ, Paul, how could you? <laughs> he needs people need to know how much he dives in every match and how he's done it against Liverpool lots of times and it happened again. I really liked when it looked all the Liverpool players. I thought the Liverpool players showed a lot of class in the match, to be honest, because they got beef. They were there at the end, shaking everybody's hands. I think during the match, Liverpool players showed class, unless Henderson has said a racist remark. I want you to say that. Unless, he, yeah, which is not at all, is it? But something's happened. I don't know if it's Something racist. Has. Something's happened. We, yeah, we will hopefully find out. It was seems that against, unlikely. Was that against Shaka or something? No, it was against no. Gabriel, a defender. Yeah. yeah. So there's yeah, there's an instant and Gabriel reacted angrily to him and there's been yeah. reports that it was racist. But yeah. it seems unlikely with Henderson, but you never know. Um, I Yeah, so Gabriel Jesus, when Odegaard was on the floor pretending to be injured, and Jesus, all the guy just lying on the floor, and then he got in Jesus's way, and then Simicast caught him with his arm, which was a foul. He caught him in the face, and Jesus pretended to be knocked out. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> he fell to the floor as if he was knocked out. You, 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 and he you wasn't. He fe like fell as you, if he. Yeah, you know what, Paul? I actually that thing when I saw that, it yeah. brought back. The Christian Eriksen memories to my. I was watching it with a friend in yeah. my room, and I was like, "We started talking about Christian Eriksen." So, I'm with yeah. you on that. That if he was faking it, if he was feigning injury, mm -hmm. that that's not on. Like, I don't, I don't like this at all. Yeah, he he, he was yeah. he wasn't knocked out, but all the Liverpool players like, "Come on, come on," and yeah. and he was fine, and yeah, so things like that. Because Annoying. you don't know, like, he's a very good player. This is it. What's this fable? Cry wolf, or there's a fable, right? That you're pretending. Yeah, the boy who cried wolf. The boy that cried wolf, and one day, like something bad could really happen, and then nobody will believe him that, he, yeah. you know, he's really injured. So. And yeah. I just want to say, I don't know who Bruce Banner is, by the way. <laughs> That's the Hulk, <laughs> the scientist who becomes Hulk. Ah, uh, I okay. I've never seen the Avengers. Yeah. I've heard of Bruce Banner. The, uh, the actor, the actor's name is Mark Ruffalo, if you know him. Ah, I've been told that about four times recently. I wanted yeah. to see that. It's just it's the wrong show. So yeah. Ah, okay, yeah, I've been told <laughs> that I look like Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess that's a compliment. I yeah, I'm happy it, with that. It's it 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 a bit <laughs> off topic, but you know, this is a this is a show. It's about football. It's for English learners, and sometimes we we do go off. On a tangent and it's okay you know yeah. we have banter here as well you know so don't worry that don't worry means, about it. that means i need my haircut by the way if I look like <laughs> <my brother. laughs> okay guys uh my villain of the week is going to be andreas pereira who i have mentioned already and i've explained what happened there so basically he scored the first fulham goal that was a well taken finish i thought it was a brilliant finish yeah. But then he did something really stupid and gifted uh, um, West Ham a penalty. I have already described what happened earlier. So um, it was just a silly, silly, silly thing to do. Just he sort of like it's like it's like it's like as if as if you are told off by your teacher or school teacher two times. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And then you do it anyway. So the, the referee didn't have a choice. He had to blow the whistle. Otherwise, yeah. he would lose respect. It was, so, <laughs> it was so funny. Like the whole circumstance of that. He couldn't help but laugh. He was just, he was waiting. He was waiting to do that, that referee. And he gave him that. He gave him that, you know, it was it was a gift. He's and a petulant so, player. Petulant, yeah. So stupid. It was so silly. Uh, unnecessary for Fulham. But, you know. As someone who has a soft spot for West Ham, as I have said here many times, I don't complain, you know. Don't look the gift horse in the mouth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's my villain of the week. And the last thing I would like us to briefly touch on here is the FBL.
Okay, guys. So, how did you do this uh, this week? Oh, well, I'm going to be honest. I haven't I haven't had time to look at this for a few weeks. So I'm now going to log in for the first time in a four weeks. <laughs> I love. Some, sometimes these players. You are busting up the league, Leon says. I saw it today. Oh, oh no. Yeah, and he, you have Ronaldo captain. Oh. But I was thinking, I don't know how long you have had Ronaldo captain for. <laughs> Okay, let's have a look at this. Let's have a look yeah. at this. Okay, so this is my team, um, but let's have a look at our league. The teachers then can you make a trigger, Jenny? I can try. Okay, here we go. So, bottom of the league, Leontes Henriquez, 46 points this week. Um, 48. <laughs> just 48. So... Okay. But Narup, Narup was bottom of the league. Narup is I the was. Place. <laughs> yeah, that's because I was out for three weeks and I just never knew what happened. Yeah. And right now, I'm, I'm considering to change Van Dyke and Trent Alexander-Arnold. Let's, yeah. let's look at your team. I just have yeah. to. Oh, yeah. You, I, suck you, need to check my, you need to check my subs. I accidentally subbed uh, Ezzy and look, I lost 10 points. <laughs> just 10 points. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is the worst. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, okay. I've signed Isak. I think Isak is going to be really good for future. Yeah, but he is flagged. He's injured. Yeah, but he's going to come back soon. I just checked. He's going unknown, to come back. Unknown return date. So it doesn't, yeah, but doesn't, doesn't in the see. other apps, in the other apps, it's shown this week. So really? Let's see. Uh, yeah. As you say, uh, if you say so. Uh, Leontes, let's look at his. Oh, but look, 18 Ronaldo, points. wow. 18 points. That's more than Haaland got this week. Yeah. How? I don't know. Well, he scored a goal and he got the bonus points, I think. Yeah, three bonus Fair points. Enough. There you go. Wow. Yeah. Good, good captain this time. <laughs> yeah, but everyone, yeah, Thiago Silva. Everyone, I don't know what happened to Thiago Silva. He did not play. There was no rumors about him. Chelsea getting injured. defense. The Chelsea. Chelsea. Well, Chelsea, the Chelsea defense is, is all right because now they have Graham Potter. They got a clean sheet. But, yeah. Oh, I thought they but got James a... didn't play. Uh, uh, Thiago Silva didn't play. I don't think yeah, Kukurea so started. So they know. got a clean sheet, but the audio players don't, don't yeah. even play. Yeah. yeah, they just didn't play. I don't know why. There's no signs of any injury or something. Mm. But that, then it means if your players don't play, that it means your subs your subs uh, uh, come on. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. get points. You will get points for Rashford and Zaha because Stones didn't play either. So you, you will get points for Zaha. So you might even get past Nrup this week. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I need to I need to make some changes, I think. That yeah. is a good battle between you two. Yeah, I love it. I love it. It's like you're playing your own league here, down here. It reminds me of Leeds and Everton battling that relegation there's, point. There's also Pat Patrick, yeah. You, you you might you it might be your next target because then Uri is kind of far away from you, fifty fifty points almost away. Wow. But anyway, we've got some look at Zdeniak. Uh, He's yeah, hacking. I, He's I'm a in hacker. The I'm in the sixth place, but I have to say, this week I was, has been disappointing for me. I need, I've got one, I've got Nico Williams, and he's not playing. So that means, that's good. That's good, because I'm going to get points for Arson because Mitrovic didn't play. So I'll ah. get points for Dalot and Arson. So I, I'm going to save this game week for me, mm -hmm. you see. But he could still be sub, uh, he could still be brought on, right? So who knows what's I going to happen there. I remember Zdenek, he got most of his points uh, on the game versus United because he yeah. had De Bruyne and Haaland as yeah. vice, vice captains and captain. I uh, saw I saw yeah. De Bruyne now and I saw Jesus because I'm preparing for that blank game week 12. So that's when uh, uh, you that's when Arsenal and uh, Manchester City don't play. So that's why I saw De Bruyne and Jesus. But yeah. I, don't, I don't know if I'm, I'm catching that. you, Zdenek. You are, yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm not very good these days, yeah. Um, well, Me we, either. oh, we still, I mean, the, have a look at my team. Stay. I had a good week, my, my week was okay, yeah. But I we have one to behind stay. you, look, look, You're look, eighth. look, but we have look to look at Clive. Look, yeah, I wanted to, well, Clive is doing better than us, but me, you, and Clive say, are close together, yeah. But I just want to say, like, look at these, look at some of these players we have in our league. How did I even? <laughs> How did I even allow them to enter this league? Like, look at that. Mohammed, like yeah. 600. That, he, what's his got, name? Is his name Naval? Yeah, Noval, I think. Noval. Noval. Ah, okay. 
Look at Mohammed, like 600 points. I have more points than him this week. I'm going to say it again. 77 points, but where is he in the league? He is he is in the 300th place. Like this is incredible. Could you show Paul's team? We should we should we should have a petition for not letting Thank him you, stay in this league. <laughs> who is he? Net Zenek. Do you know him? I don't know who he is. <laughs> I don't know who he is. But he's doing well. I know Carl. Carl has been. He's an Arsenal fan. He's been on this show. Uh, he's from Ireland, so uh -huh. he he has a lot of points. Tom Smith. Tom Smith yeah, he has always been there. He has always one been of, there. One of the listeners of my podcast, possibly. I I don't know of my Czech podcast. I can't remember. Zene, could you show Paul's team? I'm gonna show Paul's team. Yeah, I'm in ninth. Come on, come on. Paul's I haven't had Harlan. 77. Wow. Oh, you still have Who's those. That? Yeah, look at that. Look Ford at that. Paul. Cancelo. Oh. And I chose the wrong one. I was thinking about Cancelo, and then oh. I decided with De Bruyne. Oh. Yeah, Arsenal and City have been the players to go to. But as Zenek said, I need them out. I need to sell a couple of players because they don't yeah. have a game. Uh, your team seems seems good, but like this is going to be a problem for you now. The blank game week, yeah, because you've got five yeah. five superstars I, here. My team, team is good if I had had six, including Harlan. Rashford. Yeah. And mm. Rashford would have could have got points for the disallowed goal. You but... also have Mitrovic. I don't know what to do about Trent, guys. I have Trent. Yeah, let me, let me show you. I think you can just sub him. I think he's good. Yeah, but future. but the thing is, like, we don't know because um, Klopp said that it looks bad or something like that. No, he, he, said, he said it at the press conference. It doesn't look good or something like that. Yeah, he said it. So look, look. So now I have Trent, yeah, who is like the most expensive defender in the league. Exactly. He's like seven, seven two point seven point two or something. And now okay. he's probably not gonna play in at least the the next game, maybe the next few games. And so I should be selling him, but I've already made my transfer this week. So I don't know. <laughs> You've I'm already gonna... made your transfers, Enek. Yeah. How? Why? Uh, you can use I, your wild card because um, I I like to knee jerk, which is an expression, <laughs> which is an expression used in the fantasy football. If you guys um, know what I'm talking about, this is fantasy football jargon. If you knee jerk, it's like a reaction you make after the game week, like you are so emotional and then you do something, and that's, that's exactly nice. what, that's yeah. exactly what I did. <laughs> so this what? is my fourth has scored. By the way, I got Zaha in. That's what Who I scored. Did. Who scored? Uh, Nottingham Forest, and it wow. was wow. David. Is it no Dennis or Dennis? Oh, they yeah, signed Dennis. him, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Striker. Dennis. He, he was playing for Watford, wasn't he? He was good for Watford. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what did you do, Sadi Zenek? You sold. I sold. Who did I sell? I I can't remember anymore. I sold someone. Arsenal or City player? Someone, oh, I sold. I know who I sold. I think um, you sold uh, Odegaard, no? No, 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 no. I sold Arson. I sold Arson. Oh, and uh, Aronson, yeah. Aronson, sorry, uh, from yeah. Leeds. And then yeah. instead I got Zaha because I saw the games he has. And I was like, oh, oh look at this. Look, look, mm. look, at, look at how green it is. It's incredible. You, you need to have Zaha in the team like for that. Look at that. Look at the teams they play. Bournemouth, Fulham, Nottingham Forest, Southampton, Everton, Wolves, Leeds. Yeah, all but these, then he's, oh, sorry, Leicester, Leicester. he's injury prone, so you never know. Yeah, but like it's a good, it's a good punt, you know. It's a good asset, yes. Yeah. No, no, and and I, I, I had to make a decision. Like, am I gonna sell Arnold or, or no? Why, do, you, why you do you still have Socek? <laughs> That's a soft side. I yeah. think he's a he yeah, right. yeah, well, he's cheap, yeah. So like, I'm like. It's not my biggest problem, you know. It can be subbed, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. yes, I can sell him at some point, but like, it's not my biggest issue here, right? Mm -hmm. So like, you're right. He's not. He's not playing that well, but you know. Man, having Haaland is a hack. I don't think that's yeah. fair. That's yeah, you fair. should. We should make a petition to get uh, Zenek out yeah. of the. Uh, no, I think I think there should be a petition to not have how, Haaland in FPL. How can sense. you not? How can you not have Haaland in your team though? Like I don't understand why. It's a hack. Well, I don't have him now because everyone's got him and I'm behind. Same, so same. If he doesn't score like the, the, like last weekend, strikers only get three points for a goal, and yeah. sometimes even when strikers score like Haaland, they don't get bonus points is, because is they it, haven't been involved in the match. Isn't it so, four? Is it three? 
I, I'd I prefer giving my captaincy to a midfielder or a defender yeah. than a striker. Same. Yeah. So to try and make up ground, I'm hoping Haaland has like a bad week and I can catch up and then I'll get him in the team. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to keep him even through that blank game week because honestly, it's just one game. He will be benched and yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what my to do. My plan about is that. to yeah, do a wild card in. I still have my wild card. So sell oh. a couple of players and then get them all back. In game week Speaking two. of wildcard, if you guys are not that experienced, uh, you might as well do it soon because um, you're not gonna get it after. I believe you're not gonna get it after the World Cup or something. No, like you that. get you get a free one at the yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's not there's no point like not using it soon. Yeah. So it's it's good to you use the wild card soon. Yeah, that goes for you, Narup and Leontes. I think. Yep. Yeah. And it's, it's, I think I used my wild card a while ago. Uh, really it's just because yeah i had i had two injured players okay. and then yeah it is I, the strongest I, I, chip in the game by the way like it's it is it is it's the best one and i think that made a big difference now i made like what 58 points it's a good run okay guys i think uh, i think we will leave it there i want to thank all of you to to take part uh, you are the 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 regulars from last season so it was good to see us all here in this yeah. in this particular lineup, um, well, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> despite despite uh, thrashing Liverpool, I hope we are still friends <laughs> with Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good. Okay, that's good. That's good. Um, and also, I want to thank um, all our contributors in the chat. And yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. Take care, and I'll speak to you soon. See you, Zenex. Thanks, See everyone. Thanks for having us. Cheers. See you all soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Cheers. Bye.